In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create low poly clouds using geometry nodes in Blender. So let's get started by deleting the cube and press Shift A and let's insert a curve, Bezier curve. For this Bezier curve, I'm going to split my screen in half like this and I'm going into geometry node editor. Click on new to add in a new geometry node and then we get started. What I'm actually going to do first is in edit mode for the curve, I'm going to take this part of the curve, I'm going to press R and Z and hold down control to make this perfectly straight. The first thing that we're going to do to the curve in geometry node is we're going to add displacement to the curve. And we're going to do that with a set position node. Put that over here. Now nothing is happening, but we want to manage the offset with a noise texture. This connect the color to the offset and now because of the noise texture the whole curve got shifted on each axis by 0.5 so we have to subtract that number we can do that with a vector math node set this from add to subtract and subtract on each axis 0.5 so that it's the normal curve again now you also see that it's uh, it's displacing it but it's only displacing the, the the beginning and the end part we don't want that we also want to have points in the middle to do this we want to have a resample curve node and when we do that then we see it looks like this. I want to have a bit more control over this displacement. I don't want that this thing is going to displace along the x axis. I only want to have it on the y axis and on the z axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another vector math node going to add it over here i'm going to set this from add to multiply and i'm going to set everything to one except for the x-axis set that one to zero now if we set this value higher you see we will have more displacement along the y-axis and the z-axis now what i want is that in the middle there is more displacement and the further we go to the end parts of the curve there is less displacement and we can do that with a spline parameter node and this spline parameter if we put that into the factor of this one now it will be from zero to one so zero displacement over here fully displacement over there but what we want is that over here it's zero then it becomes one then it becomes zero again and we can do that with a color ramp for this color ramp if we click on this plus sign over here we add in a new one and make this white one make it black Make this middle one, make it perfectly white so that it goes from zero to one to zero. Now you see, because we added it just in to the vector over here, it's also doing it on the X axis and we don't want that. So we want to separate the X, Y and Z factors so that we have control over each of them separately. And we can do that with a combine X, Y, Z node, connect that to the vector. And we only want to have control over the Y axis and also the z axis if you want to have a different strength in the noise for the y and z you can add in a math node for both the y and the z and set this on multiply both of them and now you have control over the y and the z axis separately so for example want to have the z axis more than the y axis which we do want then we can do that like this let's also add in more points so let's do the resample curve let's set this on 300 for example and let's also set the scaling in the noise texture let's set that to a higher value let's also set the color ramp let's set that from linear to b spline and move the black parts a bit more inside of it so that we really don't have any displacement on the end parts now this curve curve now consists of 300 points and we want on each point we want to have an instance so let's add in an instance on points nodes and the instance that we want to have is an icosphere so let's put that as the instance and then we get this let's set these amount of subdivisions of the icosphere let's set that to two or three let's set it to three and then we can also change the scaling of it make it a little bit smaller like that now i think it will look better if we don't have it on every single point but that we randomly choose a different point and we can do that with this selection option over here if we add in a random value and this random value if we set that to boolean and we connect that to the selection then we can make more 
or less random points. Let's also give this all a random rotation. So let's add in another random value node and put it into the rotation and give it a spin on the max value. Let's also give this all a random scaling. So let's duplicate this random value over here and connect that with the scale. Then it's all way too big. So let's make it one, for example, make this a little bit smaller. What I also want is that in the middle, just like before with the noise that we made it more noise in the middle and less in the, in the end parts, we want to have more scaling in the middle and less scaling in the end parts. So what we can do is we can duplicate these two nodes, Shift D to duplicate them. And let's make this color ramp. Let's make it from B-spline back to linear and put both black values all the way to the end. Just to preview what this looks like, let's connect the color ramp with the scaling and then we get this. We can see that it's working. However, it's way too many points that we have. So let's actually change this. Let's add in a map range node. It's now going from zero to one. And let's make this from one a little bit lower like this. Then you see it's working. It's bigger in the middle and the further we go out of it, it gets smaller. Now that I'm thinking of it, I'm going to change this multiply of the Z noise. I'm going to make it a little bit lower so that we have more like a cloud. I want to have a bit more control over the overall scaling of it. So I'm going to add in another math node after the map range and set this on multiply so that I can multiply the scaling of each thing. Now what I want to do is combine this value with the random value that we have over here. And we're going to do that with another multiply node. And we're going to multiply that random value with this. And now we're already getting a cloud. Let's play around with the values a little bit. So let's change the two max over here to like 0.8, something like that. Let's change this to this and let's change the random value a little bit lower like that. Now what we want to do is to make this a little bit more low poly looking because it's still looking too smooth. And we can do that with a merge by distance node. If you set the distance a bit higher, then you will see they will start looking more low poly. And what we want to do now is delete these small things over here. So these, the, the really small parts, we want to delete those because they don't look good. So we're going to add in a delete geometry, but then it will delete everything, of course. We want to have control over what we're going to delete with this selection. And we can do that with this color ramp that we have. If we press Ctrl Shift and click on the, on the node, we can preview it on this but you see that the color ramp is not working we don't have black over here white in the middle and black over there but if we Ctrl shift click on the set position over here then you see we do have that so basically what we want is we want to have this data from this curve we want to transfer that to these instances and we can do that by capturing that attribute so if you add in a capture attribute and when you put that before the instances on points nodes, you can connect this color ramp to here. And now if you preview this, it's still not working. That's because these are still instances, but we want this to be real objects. So we want to realize instances and then it's working. Now we have black parts over here and over there, and it's white in the middle. If we connect this, with the delete geometry selection, we still delete everything. That's because if we preview this, it's white in the middle and it will, it will basically delete everything because nothing is completely black. So what we want to do is we want to insert a map range node to manipulate this gradient. And this map range node, it now goes from zero to one, but we want to revert this to one to zero. And if you make this even lower, then you will see every particle that is black will not be deleted. And every particle that is above zero will be deleted like this. And now we have a controller to delete particles. And if you're not happy with the distribution of the clouds, you can in the noise texture over here, set this from 3D to 4D. Then you get this W value. You can change this W value to a different seed so to say so that you get a different variation of randomness and you can also still change the z value and the y value and now a very cool thing is because we put this on a curve and we still have our curve we can edit this curve and change the direction of our clouds 
And another cool feature is that you can draw a curve with this drawing tool. And then if you draw, you're getting random clouds. And if you want to give this a material, you should always do a set material node in the geometry node editor. And then you can go into the shader editor. And then if you add in a new material for this thing, then you can change the base color, for example, but you see nothing is happening. That's because we have to set the material over here, set material 001. And now it's like this. And now you can create your own custom clouds. So there we have our low poly cloud generator in Blender. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any more questions and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos and with that being said i see you in the next one